Hi, I'm Julia Brine, and I'd like to share with you a little talk about planting pollinator gardens. Give me a moment as I share my screen. My husband Duncan and I are the principal designers for Garden Large, a naturalistic landscape design company. And we have created the Brine Garden in Pauling, New York. It's 30 years old this year. So here's planting pollinator gardens. What is pollination anyway? Flowering plants all have some version of this. They have a pistil and they have stamen. The pistil is where the seed is formed. The stamen at the end, the anthers, is where the pollen is kept. So the trick is how do you get the pollen into the pistil to create the seed? Well, that's where our friend the pollinator comes in. Now everybody thinks about bees, honeybees, when they think about pollinating, but honeybees, although they make honey, do not come from this continent. This is a bumblebee. He has his little pollen sac here. So he comes for nectar, he collects pollen, but mostly he gets pollen all over his fur. So when he flies from flower to flower, he's spreading the pollen from one flower to the next to create the seeds. Why should we care about pollinators and pollination? Because everything we eat requires pollination, just about most of what we eat. A thousand of the 1300 crops cultivated worldwide depend on animal pollination. What are the native pollinators? Well, there are beetles, bees, wasps, gnats, flies, moths, butterflies, hummingbirds. This is our favorite, the monarch butterfly caterpillar on its one of its favorite of plants of all. Um, Asclepius tuberosa. And it provides not only nectar, but it, it's where the eggs can be laid and the caterpillar can grow and the chrysalis can be prepared for the monarch butterfly. Here's another butterfly on it's a silver spotted skipper on Monarda fistulosa, a native plant that we have a lot of here. This is the spice bush swallowtail. The spice bush is an understory shrub or tree that blooms very early in the spring before just about anything else. It has these lovely little tiny flowers, little yellow flowers. And that is the host for this beautiful butterfly. One of the things I love to do is just walk around and see what I find. And one time I discovered this dangling from who knows where, from a tree up above by a thread. It's just a couple of leaves that were stuck together. It's the native Promethea moth cocoon, which is a pretty fabulous looking moth. Frogs are pollinators. Here's a little wood frog. I'm not sure what he's pollinating, but there he is. Here's our old favorite skunk cabbage, which also comes up very early in the spring. It actually can melt the snow to push its way up. And it is pollinated by uh, carrion flies gnats, caterpillars, moths, slugs, snails. So a native plant is not just a source of nectar. It, it's something that's supporting a whole host of creatures. Pollinators, sadly, are in decline. So it's important that we do what we can. And what can we do? You can recognize existing pollinator habitat and protect it. And you can provide new habitat. And the best way to do that, how do you do it? Plant native plants.
non-native plants are beautiful and it's not that you don't ever plant non-native plants but they often shortchange the pollinators they might provide nectar but they don't necessarily provide um, the proper habitat for the insects that have evolved together with native plants for millennia it's also good to plant diverse native plants with different shapes that attract different pollinators flowers come in all kinds of shapes there's the classic kind of rose shape and trumpets and tubes. Here's a Amelanchia canadensis, an early blooming native that's pollinated by bees. Here's the great Aeschylus pavia, the native red buckeye. And as you can tell, because it's red and it's tube shaped, it's attracted to butterflies, bees, and hummingbirds. Here's Cephalanthus, Cephalanthus occidentalis, the button bush. It has a very unusual plant shape, flower shape, and it's a host for butterflies, bees, and beetles. In fact, beetles are the most prevalent pollinator in the world. Here's Monarda Jacob Klein, an interesting variety that was discovered on the side of the road near the Blue Ridge Parkway. And of course, it attracts hummingbirds and hawk moths and other bees and predatory wasps. Here's the beautiful Aquilegia canadensis, which once again, you might think I'm a little prejudiced, but I do like hummingbirds. And this is a hummingbird favorite, along with butterflies. Here's an unusual shaped flower. It's Uvularia grandiflora, and there's a special bee that pollinates this one. Acer pensylvanica, or striped maple, has these beautiful hanging clusters of flowers. Maples, the Acer family, are also pollinated by the wind as well as bees. Now, here's a great one. This is Dutchman's pipe. And you can see sort of that the flower sh is shaped like a pipe. It, it comes down and up again. And then at the end, it has this funny looking flower. This is not very big. And around the entrance to the flower are sticky hairs. And one thing that this plant does is attract gnats and it traps them inside until the gnat is covered with pollen and then it releases it again. But besides gnats, it's the host of pipe fine swallowtail, which is quite lovely. Provide blooms across the seasons, so there's something to eat all the time. So here's that amelanchier again, blooming in early spring. That's the Juneberry or Shad Blow. Here's a bumblebee on Agastache, another kind of unusual shape. This is more of a summer blooming plant. And at the end of the season, you have all the asters and here's our bumblebee friend again. Don't forget the trees and shrubs. Here's the beautiful Halesia um, tetraptera, also the, called common silver bell. This one, now this is a great example of all the, the good work that these plants do for their pollinators. It attracts hummingbirds, seven different species of caterpillars. It's a host for the ti Eastern tiger swallowtail, morning cloak, Eastern comma, red spotted purple, et cetera, et cetera. The buds and the flowers are eaten by birds and bees, also enjoy this one. This is Cyananthus virginicus, the fringe tree, which is another beautiful, unusual flower shape pollinated by bees. Now here's Catalpa, which has these lovely 
luxurious ruffled flowers. And what's fun about this one is that during the day, bees find their way in, they're guided by these purple and yellow marks into the flower. And then at night, it releases a nectar and, and, and fragrance, it increases its nectar and the fragrance, and so it attracts moths at night, gets it both ways. This is the Magnolia virginiana, Sweet Bay Magnolia, pollinated by beetles. This is a relative of the Magnolia, it's Calacanthus floridus, um, which um, is pollinated by, by beetles, but as you can see, something else is going on. There are a lot of flies. It's, it's giving some benefit to other insects as well. Here's Homomalus virginiana, which is a fall blooming shrub. In fact, it blooms late after, as the leaves are falling, after the leaves are falling. In fact, you might start to see it now in the understory. Um, and you might wonder what can pollinate this after most insects have started to go to sleep and to hibernate. There's a special moth, the owlet moth, that can take the cold. And that's the pollinator for this one. Speaking of habitat, when you're cleaning up or thinking of cleaning up your garden, think about doing it in the spring because in the fall, if you leave those stalks and leaves and, and leaf litter, you're leaving the chrysalis and hibernating bees and other hibernating insects where they can be cozy for the winter. Um, and by doing that, you're, you're helping to protect them. So here's a book that was very inspirational to me, Bringing Nature Home by Doug Talamay. He's a big proponent of planting native plants in our gardens. And Attracting Native Pollinators, published by the Xerxes Society. If you ever want to take a deep dive into pollination and all the different pollinators, this is a great one. And I'd like to thank these great photographers for their images. And thank you for joining me for this little talk. Have fun gardening. Bye.